Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you For Whom the Bell Tolls, starring Gary Cooper, Ingrid Bergman, Akim Tamirov, Gail Sondergaard, and Mikhail Razumni. Ladies and gentlemen, your guest producer, Mr. Otto Kruger. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. If you've ever been to our California Sierras, you have a good idea of what the central mountainous areas of Spain are like. A high, spectacular land, remote and inaccessible. And here in the volcanic years of 1937 to 39, when Spain was torn by a civil war, guerrilla fighting found its perfect setting. And in tonight's Lux Radio Theater play, these mountains become, too, the setting for one of the great love stories of our time, For Whom the Bell Tolls. This is based on the uh, best-selling book by Ernest Hemingway. It is presented through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, producers of Here Come the Waves. And our stars from the original cast are Ig Ingrid Bergman, playing what Reader's Digest calls the greatest part ever offered a woman on the American screen, and Gary Cooper, producer and star of his own new international picture, Along Came Jones. Also, Akim Tamirov, Mikhail Razumni in their original screen roles, and Gail Sundergaard. Uh, so far, this Paramount picture has played only special engagements in key cities. It will be released for general distribution in just four days. Meanwhile... We're happy to bring it to your home in return for your loyalty and your appreciation of Lux Flakes. I hardly need to add that through your use of Lux Flakes, you not only make possible these Monday night productions, but you help yourself in that all-important task of taking care of the nice things you wear and helping them to look better and last longer. So you see, you get two blessings in one package. Now, here's the first act of For Whom the Bell Tolls, starring Gary Cooper as Robert Jordan... Ingrid Bergman as Maria, Akim Tamirov as Pablo, Gail Sundergaard as Pila, and Mikhail Razumni as Raphael. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Spain, 1937 A nation gasping under the savageries of merciless civil war During the historic siege of Madrid An American named Robert Jordan Slipped into the ravaged city Jordan oh, It is good to see you Thank you, General Galt You did well with their munitions train. Well, it blew up, General, if that's what you mean. Yes. And next is a bridge. Here is a map. And here, Jordan, high up in the mountains of Segovia is your bridge. It is all important that it be blown. We are taking the offensive, Jordan, at last. When? Dawn, four days from now. When we attack, the enemy will call up reinforcements. Troops, artillery, tanks, and everything will have to cross that bridge. Above all else, it must be destroyed at the stated hour. Now, how will I know the exact time? Squadron of our bombers will fly over the mountains. That will be your signal. What about a guide? Got anybody? An old man named Anselmo. He knows the people to help you. Gorillas, a handful. They hide out in the forest and caves. Now, how soon can you leave? Any time. I'd like a drink and a haircut. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Get the drink first. You need it more. Wait, I go with you. <laughs> Get behind this rock, Roberto. Yes. Now look down there, you see? Yeah, I see. The bridge. And the sawmill. The guards live there. Eight men and a corporal. Roberto? Yes? That soldier on the bridge, he's a boy from my village. You couldn't kill him, Anselmo? Yes, considering the necessity for destroying the bridge. But if I live, I will never do harm to anyone again that it will be forgiven. I hope for that too, old man. Well, now where to? Higher up. There is a cave on the edge of the mountain. I have friends. Uh, who leads there, Anselmo? Well, Pablo is the leader. Uh, Pablo does not like foreigners. Uh, 
Roberto, come here. See? Here is Pablo. Pablo is the boss here, Roberto. Foreigner? Yes, I am also a friend. I'm here at the command of the Republic. In these mountains, I command. What's that? In your pack? Dynamite. Oh. Now I can use dynamite. How much you bring me? None. It's mine. What for? A bridge. A bridge? That is my business. In this country, foreigner, it is my business. You uh, have a good horse there, Pablo. You... You know horses? Where'd you get him? Civil guard. I killed him without harming the horse. You've killed many civil guards? Twenty. Thirty. Yes, but every day there are more. For the war, I had no horses, not even one. Now I own five. We're safe here now, my people and my horses. And that's why you will not... Dynamite the bridge. We're tired, Pablo. We're hungry. You will not dynamite the bridge. It's all right, Roberto. <clears throat> we can go to the cave. You have enough to eat, Roberto? Oh, plenty. Yes. Yeah. Here we eat like general. Pay no attention to Raphael. He is a gypsy. Where are the other men, gypsy? We come and go. Some of us are sentries. Pablo insists on sentries. You're finished? Thanks. Hey, wait a minute. How are you, Cole? Maria. His name is Roberto. He's a dynamite. You here long, uh, Maria? Hmm. You see my hair? When I first came, it was still shorter. I've been here three months. I was on a train. They were taking me south. Pablo blew up the train at Arevalo. I was a prisoner on the train. When it blew up, I escaped. They found me, they and Pilar. She was hiding in the rocks. No hair at all. She cried all the time. And was she ugly? Mm. You blow trains? A few in Estremadura. You, uh, you belong to Pablo now? Pablo. <laughs> No, I do not belong to Pablo. <laughs> this is a very strange woman, Roberta. She wants no one. No one? No one. Not you either. Uh, I have no time for women. No? <laughs> you will meet another woman soon. Really, a woman. No, he means Pilar. Mm, something barbar. Mm, hundred times braver than Pablo. But something more, What are you saying now, you unmentionable gypsy? So, uh, uh, I was just telling the comrade what a gentle woman you are, Pilar. The comrade has dynamite. Get out! At once, Pilar. At once. You, Maria. Yes? Leave us alone, crop headed one. You don't frighten me, Pilar. Hola, English? Not English. American. I call you English. What was that gypsy saying? Uh, that you are much woman. And I'd say he's right. And what were you saying to the girl? The girl? Uh, nothing. Nothing? I see how she is from watching you. I'm listening, Gless. She's young, and she's had a bad time. The worst time a woman can have. You understand? Sure. When do you leave here? In three days, if I'm still alive. Oh, I do not like that kind of talk. Why are you here? The bridge? Yes. We should blow all the bridges and get out. Nothing to do here but watch Pablo get drunk. I'm glad you are come, Inglés. Uh, Pablo does not want me to blow the bridge. When it is dark, the men will be back. We will talk then, Inglés. Maybe you will blow the bridge after all. <laughs> What do you do with a pencil and paper, Roberto? I'm drawing a sketch of the bridge. Ah, yes, it is the bridge itself there on the paper. How do you explore the bridge, Robert? I don't go for the bridge. Uh, well, then we'll do it alone. The old man and I. Do what you want, but do it away from my mountains. Not where we'll be hunted down and killed. You could escape easily with horses. <laughs> I have five horses and eight people. You and the old man make ten. Until you had horses, you are one of us. 
Now you are rich with horses and a coward. You're an old man making trouble with your mouth. I'm an old man not afraid to fight for the Republic. I'm an old man without horses. You will blow no bridge here. Wait a minute. Pilar? I am for the bridge and the Republic. What's that woman? I am for the bridge and against you. Nothing more. Primitivo? I am also for the bridge. Fernando? To me, the bridge means nothing. I'm for you, Pilar. Andres? Equally so. Me too, Pilar. I'm for you. The bridge will be blown, Pablo. And after that... I, you... You think there will be an afterwards? It means nothing to you to be hunted like a beast. Don't try to frighten us, coward. Coward? Is it cowardly to know what is foolish? And when I kept you all alive through the war? How I believed in you once. One year of war... And you turn coward and drunkard. Woman, you have no right to speak in that way. Not before my people, huh? the foreigner. Here I command. You heard them. No one commands here but me. I should shoot you and the foreigner both. Try it and see what happens. You are like one of the others now. Like them, you take your orders from me. <laughs> All right. All right, command then. And if you want, the foreigner can command too. Maybe I, I am lazy and drink too much. Maybe you think I'm a coward, although you know better. But I'm not stupid. And now if you're a woman as well as a commander, show us all something to eat. Maria, serve us the supper. Where do you go, Roberto? Outside. I'm tired. I've got blankets. I'll sleep in the open. Why not in here? Well, I like it better in the open. <laughs> in the open. He likes it better in the open. Do not worry about your dynamite. I will watch English. Thanks, Pilar. Roberto. Roberto. Oh. Oh, it's you. You sleep with your gun. That's good. You must be careful. Pablo. He's uh, still in the cave? He left a few minutes ago. He tries to hide his sadness in the wine. When Pablo does that... There's danger. I can take care of myself. I'm thinking of the bridge. I'm thinking about you, Roberto. Why, Maria? I don't know. Look. Look at the stars. They're low. They're so low they're caught in your hair. My hair is ugly, ugly. I can feel the stars in your hair. Roberto. See? <laughs> I've mussed your hair. All day I wanted you to do that. To feel your fingers through my ugly hair. Go back to the cave, Maria. Yes. Good night, Roberto. We thought it best to wake you, Inglés. There is something you should know. Know what? The gypsy. He has just come back. What are you trying to tell me? Wake up. When Pablo left, the gypsy followed him. I move like an owl, Roberto. I see everything. Tell him. Roberto, you have to kill Pablo. Now, before he kills you. He won't kill me. Still, you must kill him. Why? You don't know Pablo. What if he takes the horses and goes off? What if you bridge them? Nah. When we have no horses to escape with. You saw him take the horses? No, but he hides them deeper in the forest. And he... He talks to them. Pablo talks to his horses. He tells his horses to pay no attention to you. And to you, Pilar. Huh. Go to bed, Gypsy. You don't understand, Rabbi. Shut up. Pilar, you know Pablo best. What'll he do? I do not know. Have you observed how he watches the girl? It lies on him like a sickness. Until now, she has not looked at a man. But she looks at you... And Pablo sees it, and the sickness grows worse. That's another reason I want to blow this bridge and get out. And we need more horses. How can we get them? El Sordo. Maybe El Sordo will help us. El Sordo? These mountains are not all Pablo's. A uh, good man? As good as Pablo is bad. Woman, what do you talk about? Huh? You and the English. About you. Who else? <laughs> Pay no attention to her, Inglés. He's, he's difficult, but very loyal. Inglés. What? 
When I left here, before I took my gun and I went for my horses. Yeah, but my mind has changed. I have... I return to say I'm glad you have come. Yeah, you, you're welcome here. Wait a minute. Listen. Planes. Planes? Airless. Planes? Whose are they? Whose planes? German planes. Italian. And they see my horses? They're not looking for horses. I could beat in their feet. I could beat in their mortar. The moon is too bright. They'll see the horses. Have you ever seen planes like this before? No, never. Never so close as this. Get in the cave. We'll talk in the morning. Get inside, all of you. And hurry. What do you think? Yes? Well, we'll need more horses. And soon. El Sardo will get them for you. Tomorrow when you go to him, will you take me with you? I, uh, Maria. Yes? Understand me. I'm, I'm in this war to the finish. A man doing what I'm doing can have nothing else in his life. Whatever happens to you will happen to me. You will take me. Uh, yes. Yes. In the morning. Good night, Maria. Good night, Trubert. Our stars will return with Act Two of For Whom the Bell Tolls in a moment. Now, here's Libby. With a question, Mr. Kennedy, who would you say could do a better job of washing woolens, men or women? Well, Libby, that's putting me on the spot. But uh, women have more experience in washing things. Then when a man, a serviceman at that, beats a girl at this job, it's new. Oh, I'll say. When did that happen? Well, I know a girl who had a lovely wool sweater. Since it was white, she had to wash it almost every time she wore it. And it shrank and shrank. Hmm. Not a luxe girl, evidently. No, but she has a boyfriend. Who is smarter than she is? Well, he's in the army, and he washes his wool shirt. And he wrote her a letter. Yes? He said, I'm not only enjoying the luxe radio theater, but luxe as well. We get it at the post exchange, and I wash my good woolen shirts with luxe. They come out fresh and clean and fit fine. And so? And so his girlfriend took the hint. After all, sweaters are precious these days, and the Lux way keeps them soft as new. Keeps them fitting nicely, too. You'll find easy directions on the Lux box. Remember to stick to Lux flakes for all washable woolens, so they'll stay like new longer. Now, Mr. Kruger returns to the microphone. Act Two, For Whom the Bell Tolls, starring Ingrid Bergman as Maria, Gary Cooper as Robert Jordan, Akim Tamirov as Pablo, Gail Sondergaard as Fila, and Mikhail Razumni as Raphael. <laughs> Over the sharp rim of the Zagovia Mountains, the morning sun cuts through the frosty air. Raphael the Gypsy and Anselmo the Old Man have already left to, to watch the bridge in the road. And now, Robert Jordan is also ready to leave the cave with Maria and Pila for their meeting with El Sordo. Suddenly, up the rocky path, a man emerges through the mist. Hola, amigos! Salud, Roberto! Did you see the airplanes last night? Well, of course. Weren't you here? Oh, uh, Fernando. <laughs> you did not miss me in the dark. I've been to La Ganca. I go every now and then to see my wife and children. Pilar, come here and listen. What did you see on the road last night? Oh, a few trucks as usual. A few of their guns as usual. Sit down, Fernando. Breakfast. Uh, uh, did you pick up any news in mm, town? Nothing. Um, oh, oh, yes. There is talk the Republic is preparing an attack. That what? They talk of an offensive, uh, perhaps uh, Navasarada. Uh, uh, have you heard of it? They talk of this in town. It's supposed to be a secret. Only rumors. An offensive of some proportions. Rumors? Well, how can they let such a thing get out? What else? No, no, nothing. Oh, oh, they say we would blow up the bridges. Hmm. Hey, if this is a joke... There is always such talk, Roberto. <laughs> always rumors. We'll be back later, Fernando. All right, Pilar. Maria. I'm ready. You, man of rumors, guard the explosives. With my life, Pilar. And then calm yourselves. Only rumors. But <clears throat> must we talk business so soon? I have good whiskey and glasses. We would talk now, El Sordo. If you wish. What is the reason for the breach? An attack? Yes. And we must have more horses if Pilar's people are to get out alive. Yes, it is a necessity. When do you blow the bridge? It will be easy to do it tonight. The English has to wait till the signal comes. 
Do it in daylight and we may all be killed. Not if we have enough horses. Horses again. I will get them for you. How? Where? I will go down tonight. I will find soldiers. And you will have their horses. Good. Look at this guy. Not good if it snows. Horses make tracks. And the soldiers will follow. Snow? This is the month of May. It is too late for snow. Perhaps. If there is no snow, I will pay you a visit. And if, uh, if there is snow? Then I will do what is best. The moment will provide the answer. Pilar! What is it? You're tired. We'll rest a while. Oh, shut up. It is not much further to the cave. Sit down. All right. <laughs> I am tired. And I'm jealous. <laughs> How foolish. Jealous? Of Maria's 19 years. But you won't always be 19, little one. What would you do if you were 19? Take the Ingles away from you. Even with my years and my ugly face. You're not ugly, and I love you. And I love you much, child. But do you know what it is to be ugly all your life and to feel in the heart that you are beautiful? You are beautiful. <laughs> you have little hair, Maria, but you are a gift to any man. And you, Inglés, you are a prize for any woman. I would have made a good man, but I'm all woman and all ugly. Still... Many men have loved me. Is that not strange? Where are you going? I have a surprise. Close your eyes. And you too, Ingrid. <laughs> what surprise, I wonder. <laughs> well, the horses would be a good surprise. Oh, don't worry. El Sardo and his men will get them. I think Pilar is bored with us. Look. Oh, she's disappeared. Pilar! Let her go, Roberto. Let her go. What are you worried about? You. Why? Because I'm so happy? I, I told you last night that I belong to nothing and to no one but the bridge. Last night I wanted to tell you about myself. You said uh, whatever happens to me will happen to you. Yes. Why did you say that? Where are your people? Your, your mother and father? My father and mother, I saw them killed. I'll tell you how it was. N no, no, My Maria. father was the mayor of our town. And when the fascists came... They took all the Republicans and lined them up against the wall. My father cried out very loud, Long live the Republic! And then they shot him. But my mother had no politics. She only loved my father, but she couldn't say that. She just looked at him there at her feet and she said, Long live my husband who was the mayor of this town. She said it very loud like a shriek. And then they shot, and she fell, and I tried to go to her, but they had tied me with the rest of the girls. Oh, I wanted to be shot, too, and I was going to shout, Long live the Republic and my mother and my father. But then... And there was no more shooting. They herded us up this hill to the city square. Across from the city hall, there was a barbershop. They took us there. No. No, Maria, oh, no. I want to tell you, but I can't. Maria. Oh. oh, are you angry about something? No, no, of course not. Oh, I'm glad. I I won't cry anymore. Oh, Roberto, I, I don't know how to kiss or I would kiss you. Where do the noses go? Always I wondered where the noses would go. They are not in the way, are they? I always thought they would be in the way. Look, I can do it myself. Maria. Oh, did I do it wrong? No, no, no. Give me your hand. We're going to find... Come in, Roberto. And welcome home, ladies. Welcome home. You did well with El Sordo? We did all right. Uh, what about the road, Anselmo? All day there was very little business on the road. Here, I've marked it all down on the paper. 
Only ten trucks? And you, Gypsy, the bridge? They changed the guards at noon, then again at six. Still the same. Eight men and the corporal. Where is Pablo? Pablo has been gone all day. Maria, stir up the fire. Stir it up yourself. I have to dry Roberto's jacket. He fell in the brook. <laughs> he fell in the brook. Must you care for him as for a child? No. A man who is cold and wet. A man who has come home to his house. Listen, I've been wet before. Inglis, come here. What is it? Come outside. Look. Look at the sky. It's, it's dark and... No. No. <laughs> How do you like it, Pilar? Pablo, get out of my sight. It's very beautiful, the snow. Hmm? How do you like it, woman? How do you like to command when it snows? Shut up, drunkard. I know, I know why you went to El Sordo. But the horses make tracks in the snow, English. There will be no offensive now. No, no bridge blown. No soldiers hunting us in the mountains. No, only the snow. And love making in the forest. Watch your mouth. Everyone's so quiet. Everyone's so strange. What are you all thinking about? I do not think, Maria. I warm myself with wine. Your shoes, Roberto. Here, they are dry now. <laughs> you think I was a child, the way you. Maria! Here, Maria. Dry my shoes. Stand up, Pablo. Stand up. Are you drunk or just pretending to be drunk? Roberto. <laughs> Don Roberto. Wait. Wait, English, wait. Uh, the, there is something I have wanted to ask. Uh, why have you come so far to fight for our republic? Yes, why? Well, answer him, Don Roberto. Well, the man fights for what he believes in, Fernando. Yes, but in his own country. Well, it isn't just Spain who's fighting here. There's a bigger issue here, as I see it, an issue that affects all of us. And because I see it as I do, I'm here to do the best job I can. Were you always a Republican? And your father? Oh, sure. He voted the Republican ticket all his life. Hey, and they did not shoot him for it? No, they don't shoot you for being a Republican in America. Roberto was a professor. He told me this afternoon. An instructor. I taught Spanish. The professor, huh? <laughs> He has no beard. No, he's a false professor. <laughs> no beard. A false professor. He does have a beard. Does he? You should know, girl. I have had enough of it, you hear, Pablo? Enough. He is only drunk, English. Drunk? Yes. He tried to provoke me, English, huh? Is that it? Provoke me into fighting? <laughs> is that how you'd get rid of me? I say you are a coward and not drunk. <laughs> I don't provoke. See? I sit in my chair and eat his insults. Yes. And I'll still be alive when you're all dead. And I spit on you. <laughs> I don't provoke. <coughs> I, I don't provoke. <coughs> my mouth bleeds, Augustine. <laughs> Red. Red like the wine in my cup. I drink to the Senora Commander and to all the fools. <laughs> I. I don't provoke. Get out! Yes. Yes, I get out. I'll go to my horses. They have more sense than men. Now tell them. Tell them about the bridge professor and how to escape afterwards. <laughs> oh, the snow. Very beautiful. Where's... You should have killed him, Roberto. What will he do now? You throw a grenade in here. That's his style. Give me your pistol, English. Oh, shoot him when he comes back. Wait, wait. Do not forget he knows the way of our retreat. We should point out to Pablo how his conduct... Shut up! We'll kill him when he returns. No, not in cold blood. Cold? You Ingleses are all cold, but I'm not cold. I burn. Burn! Pablo was once a leader. Without mercy, yes, but also without fear. We live today because of Pablo. But he's changed. And we must do what must be done. <laughs> He's back. Pablo, I'll kill you. I'll kill you with my hands. I'll kill you. Shut up. Shut up. Agustin. 
I'm glad. There's no his stuff, and I'm I'm not I'm drunk no more. You were listening to us. You're afraid of being killed. When I left you, I was alone. I felt lonely. You do not know what it means to be alone. Now hear me, all of you. I have done wicked things in my time. I have killed innocent men. Yes, and it's God's truth that I would restore them. I would restore them all to life. It's God's truth. I'm with you now. And it's God's truth that I'm not a coward. Fools! Lunatics! You believe him? I'm back with my people, and I think over Sordo. He would be across the lines by now, stealing horses for us. And making tracks, Pablo, to bring the soldiers upon us. The bridge must be blown. Nothing else is important. Roberto. Maria, get down, quick. I brought you coffee. See, I got a bird in this morning. Quiet. Quiet. I, I, I must have been dreaming. They're down there, behind the trees. Yes. I saw him. I, I saw a soldier on a horse. But I see nothing. I swear I saw him. Oh, it couldn't be. Oh, Roberto. Yes. There it is. I was right. Get back to the cave. Tell Pablo. Pablo? Yes. Tell him to bring his rifle. Hurry now. Well, Inglés? Soldier is dead. Raphael, move him into the brush. At once, Inglés. I, I killed the soldier without uh, harming the horse. Now, look, look. What a beauty. Oh, what a single beauty. The horse. Augustine. Yes. Uh, get the machine gun out of the cave, and you, Anselmo. I'll take the horse to the corral. No. He's made tracks in here, and he's got to make them out again. There are bound to be other soldiers. Go on, now make tracks out of here. Oh, you have much heading, Liz, yeah. We may have to run for it. Fernando takes the dynamite, and Andres, go to Pablo's horses. And if you hear firing, bring them down to the pass. The women will go with you. No, Roberto. You will go with Andres. And if there's a fight, we'll need him to help you and to hold the horses. Where do you take the machine gun? Uh, to the big rocks at the top of the canyon. I go with you, Roberto. Well, there may be a fight. I can help. I can hold the legs of the gun. Now go back. Please, I want to be with you. You're coming. Roberto, look down in the valley. Cavalry. A whole troop. What are they shooting at? Who? Hand me the glasses. The binoculars. Pablo. They shoot at Pablo. That's true. No. Five men. Riding hard up the mountain. El Sordo. El Sordo. Oh, he's drawing them away from us. Then we stay where we are. What are you saying? El Sordo will need us. Can't you see that they are done for? If we show ourselves, we're done for too. Then what happens to the bridge? Those are our comrades down there. Are you afraid to fight for our comrades? The English is not afraid. What use is courage without intelligence? El Sordo has both. He will understand why we do not expose ourselves. He'd have found better cover on this side of the canyon. He knows that, Ingles. El Sordo knows. What do we do, Roberto? It will be a long day. But we'll wait it out here at the cave. Uh, I'm, I'm back, Ingles. The soldiers never even saw me. It's been dark for an hour. Where have you been? When the shooting stopped, I went. I went to where Sordo was. Dead? Dead. All five of them. They had, they had taken their heads. No heads. The cavalry rode back to the valley. We can see them from here. We're safe. Wine. Wine. Where's wine? It's the old man. I'm Selmo. It started, English. I have been by the bridge. I have seen them. What? Seen what? Guns, trucks, even tanks. More soldiers than I could count. Everything is moving toward the front. So, it is come. Come? What is come? The enemy has found out that our troops attack at dawn. We were going to surprise them. Now they will surprise us. Who knows the way through their line? To Navasarada. I have been through before twice. Inglés, do not be disturbed. Even without their sword, we have enough men to blow the bridge. Yes, I have confidence in you, Inglés. Quiet, the Inglés is writing. It's a dispatch for General Gulf. Tell him the news has leaked out. The enemy is prepared. Maybe the general knows it, but if he doesn't, he must be told in time. I'll get to. Good luck. We pray for you, Augustine. Inglés. What? When you came here, you told me the bridge goes at dawn after the third night. That is tomorrow morning. If uh, Augustine doesn't get through, or if he does, and they still decide to attack, we'll see our bombers at dawn. Our bombers. Then everything must be in readiness, whatever they decide. Everything. I will see that it is so. I'll guard the horses tonight. Now, get what sleep you can, all of you. And watch my thing, if you like. Pablo, 
off your blankets here, Roberto. If you must watch horses, you should be warm. Put a blanket around you. It's cold. Will there be fighting tomorrow? I don't know. Are you afraid? Only for you. Pilar said I'm to stay with you, that you'll take me to the Republic. You and Pilar will each have a horse. You'll be safe with her. But I go with you, not Pilar. I came here on foot with the old man, and I'll go the same way. Maybe Augustine will get through. Maybe there will be no fighting, Roberto. How much time have we left? A lifetime, Maria. I mean till daylight. Oh, five hours. Pilar told me that time is not important. Maybe she's right. Three days and three nights. And yet they are everything. Longer than the months in prison. Longer than the years I've lived. She told me something else before I left the cave. She said we must live all our life in the time that remains. Why did she say that? Because we would all die tomorrow. And that you know it as well as she does when you give it no importance. Pilar is crazy. She had a reason, so she said, I must tell you everything that happened to me when, when they shot my mother and father. I, I, I don't want to hear it. It must be told. They pulled my hair and cut it off with a razor and put the braids in my mouth to gag me. In the mirror in the barber shop, I could see the men laughing. And then they took me out. I stumbled over the dead barber. He, he, they had shot him because he belonged to a union. Then they dragged me up the stairs of the city hall to my father's office. I... Now don't, I, don't talk about it. Don't think about it anymore. I was going to tell you on the way back from El Sardos, but I was glad when you couldn't let me. Then I was happy. I felt as if it had never happened. But tonight, Pilar said, you must know everything. And now you won't love me. Tomorrow you'll take me through the lines, and then I'll never see you again. No, no, Roberto. We can't change things. But it's true. It's true that I never kissed any man until I kissed you. No one, no one ever touched you, Maria. No one. You believe that? You believe that? I know that. And you can love me? I can love you more. I'll never leave you. Never. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In just a moment, our stars will return in Act Three of For Whom the Bell Tolls. Now, young Bob Jones is home on leave, and he and Betty are celebrating by having dinner at a smart hotel. But what's wrong? Betty stops, her spoon halfway to her mouth. Bob has such a funny look on his face. Sort of hurt and embarrassed. Why, he's looking at my hand. What's the matter, honey? Penny for your thoughts. Of course, Bob isn't going to spoil the party by telling Betty her hands look red and rough, especially when he thinks maybe it's his own fault. Maybe Betty has to work too hard, hands in soap and water jobs all day at home. But Betty could easily avoid embarrassing her husband by one simple change. If she would change from strong soap to Lux Flakes for dishes and other cleaning jobs, soon her hands would look soft, smooth, and lovely again. Many, many actual tests have proved this. And then... A penny for your thoughts, honey. I was just thinking, you have the prettiest little hands in the world. Gosh, a fellow's proud to have a wife like you. Best of all, it costs less than a penny a day to change ugly dishpan hands to Lux hands. Change to Lux for your dishes tomorrow. Now, Mr. Kruger returns to the microphone. After the play, we'll ask our stars to tell us a little about their experience in the filming of this picture. But now here's the third actor for whom the bell tolls... Starring Gary Cooper as Robert Jordan, Ingrid Bergman as Maria, Akim Tamirov as Pablo, Gail Sundergaard as Pilar, and Mikhail Razumni as Raphael. The night wears on. A chilly stillness hangs over the cave on the mountaintop. 
Nearby where the horses are tethered, Robert Jordan stares through the blackness, his thoughts fixed on the bridge, on the girl named Maria who sleeps in the cave, and on the man, Augustine, who has ridden for General Goltz with the news that could stop a futile battle. But in Navaterada, Augustine learns that generals are hard to find. Who the devil are you? What do you mean by waking me up? I'm Captain Gomez, and this man... He has a dispatch from General Goltz. No one believes me. For heaven's sake, get me to the general. This lunatic is either a bandit or a spy. Put him under guard. He bears an important message, Major. And I intend to get him through. Then get out of here. I know of no General Goltz. Hi, the Lieutenant Colonel. Why didn't you get here sooner? What bridge are you talking about? Questions. Questions every inch of the way. Never in my life have I seen such stupidity. For two hours we've been trying to see you, sir. I swear by the saints and my dead mother, take me to General Goltz at once or I'll kill you! Here's your pass. General Goltz is three miles down the road. Pray God you reach him in time. Why didn't you bring this to me at once? Oh, stupidity, General. Ignorance, stupidity. Crazy suspicions. You are the wireless. What about Avalia? Avalia is calling through, sir. And, and? The former took off ten minutes ago. Exactly on schedule, sir. They're gone. It's too late, Gomez. We're done for. Ah, too bad. Too bad. It could have been a great victory. Yes, a great victory. Roberto? Yes? You do not sleep? I'm thinking of Augustine. If he got through, it's four o'clock. The moon is so bright, it could be morning already. Why did you leave the cave? I had a dream. A good dream? Mm -hmm. That I was in your house. In America, the one you told me about where you were a little boy. Your mother was there. She smiled at me. She was holding a child who looked exactly like my Roberto. And when I asked her whose son it was, she said, Why, it's yours, Maria. <laughs> That's why I had to tell you my dream. You can't wait till I take you to America, can you? That, too, is like a dream, Roberto. Now wait till this war is over. You'll always take me with you? Unless you run away. I'll never go away from you. I would try to take care of you well. What does that mean? It means that when morning comes, I would take your sleeping bag and hang it in the sun. Your socks should be washed and dried. I would see that you had two pairs. What else? This your gun. I would learn how to fire it. Then if you were wounded, we won't be captured. I could shoot you before I kill myself. Do you have uh, many ideas like that? Not many, but it's a good one in this war. But I'd rather have you shoot me, though. Promise me if there's ever any need, you'll shoot me. Sure, I, I promise. Thank you. I know it's not easy to do. <laughs> but there are other things I can do for you. Besides shooting me? Yes. <laughs> I can roll a cigarette for you without spilling the tobacco. And if you're sick, I'll take care of you and read to you. Well, suppose I'm not sick. And I give up smoking and have only one pair of socks and hang up my sleeping bag myself. What then? Then, mm, I'll just sit by you and watch you and love you as I do now. Now? Maria... Everything is now. There never is anything else but now. Not for anyone. If they only realize it. Some people have many years. Some only three days. But everything is in proportion. You can live a great life and not miss a thing if you pay no attention to yesterday and tomorrow. Like, like we're doing. It's beautiful here. Will we ever come back? Someday, Maria. Do you think Augustine got through? Who knows? Are you, are you afraid? I love you, Roberto. As I love my mother and father. As I love what I love most in the world, and I love you more. Always remember. I'll remember. Maria, it's time. To get ready for the bridge? Yes, we'll go to the cave. There's much to be done. English. There has been no signal, no airplane. Maybe Augustine got through. We have to be ready just in case. English, 
Inglés, I do not sleep this night, Inglés. I'm a leader. I care for my people. I have been through the mountains, and I have brought three more men. Whose men? They are the men of my friend Elias. Each with a horse, Inglés. Three horses and three men? Where is the gain? Oh, well, well, maybe one gets killed, and he won't need his horse, understand? Inglés and I, we understand each other. Nobody understands you. Neither God, nor your mother, nor yourself either. Take the men of Elias with you. Yeah. Also the gypsy. You will take this side of the bridge, the roadmaster's hut. Cover the bridge until I blow it. Good. But not a move until the bombers come over. Bombers, yes. Pilar, you will do the same at the sawmill post. Be careful not to alarm the sentries unless you hear the planes. Take the others with you. Primitivo, Fernando, and address. An old man... Now, the old man here comes to the bridge with me. And what of Maria? What of me, Roberto? Well, you will stay with the horses. Don't be afraid if you hear shooting. We can tie the horses. I can go with you. No, it's more important that they be watched. And I'll retreat when all, all is finished. Then the bridge is blown. Come back through the gorge as fast as you can. Now, get the horses and men of Elias. It's time come. to go. Come. Yes, come on. Maria. Maria. Salud, Maria. Salud, Roberto. Take much care. Come back quickly. Hey, what sort of a kiss is that? If you cry, they'll think I hurt you. I, I'm not crying. I hear the planes, Inglis. I know. I heard them. Augustine, he did not get through. Or uh, if he did, well, someday we may know what happened. Watch for yourself, Pilar, and for her. I care for you very much, Inglis. Remember that, and don't worry. Everything will go well at the bridge. Sure, everything's fine. Now, let's go. <laughs> Hand me the rest of that dynamite, Anselmo. Be careful of the girders, Roberto. Yeah, what about the others? Can you see? Trouble on one side, Pilar on the other. They keep the soldiers busy. There's killing, Roberto. Well, I'll be through here in five minutes. Roberto, for all the letting of blood, will there be a penance? We fight to make peace, Anselmo. It's necessary to kill so others may live. When peace comes, all men must do penance, or we never have a true and human basis for living again. Are the wires clear? Yes, Roberto. Well, stretch them out along the bridge now. Hurry. The detonator, yes. I... Roberto, look, the enemy, they're coming. Tanks. A whole column of tanks. They're coming toward the bridge. They run with the wires. Hook them to the desert air and blow it. No, Roberto, no. By the time you reach the desert air, I'll be finished. If I yes. blow the bridge, I blow you too. No. Do what I tell no, you. No, I cannot, Roberto. They have reached the other side. Hook the wires, Tommy. Oh. Oh, yes, Roberto, yes. And Selmo, is it ready? Yes. They're on the bridge, Roberto. Uh, run to the horses. I'll follow. Yes, Roberto. And Selmo. Tommy, blow it, Tommy. Yes. On the horses, hurry. You're all right, thank God, thank God. Pilar? Yes. Fernando? Dead. The old man also. Where's Pablo? We saw him coming up the gorge. He'll be here in a... Get down, hold on. Inglés! Pilar! Come! Come! All is ready for the retreat. What was that shooting? Inglés, Inglés, look. Plenty of horses now. The shooting, what was it? Quiet woman. Rafael. He's dead. Where's Fernando? The old man. And where are the men of Elias? Where? Why don't you say you just shot them? I look after my own people. The men of Elias were strangers. I provide horses for my own people. We have horses to spare. How would I know we would have three dead? Shut up! No. I'll lead retreat. Retreat to where? First down the gorge. They'll be waiting for us down there. We stay on this side of the river. They're on the other side. They've got tanks. Tanks can ford the river. I know the way. Take the lead, then I'll follow. There's the road, Inglés. We cross it and go into the forest. There's the tanks coming. They've seen us. The tank cannot follow us in the forest. Cannon. They've got cannon. There is time to cross between shots. Hear me. At a gallop. One by one. Pilar Maria, you first. No, I wait for you, Roberto. No, wait then. Pilar, primitivo. Andres, at a gallop. Maria. Inglés. Hurry. We wait you. All right, Maria. All right, Roberto. Wait for the next shot, then go hard before they can fire again. You will follow? I'll follow. I'm ready. Go. She's made it! English! Start off, I'm coming. Roberto! English! 
Right here. I'll get him. I'll get him. What, what happened? Your leg, you fainted, Roberto. The tank? There's no more tank. Pablo did it. A there, grenade. There are others coming down the road in glass. Cavalry. Cavalry? My leg is broken. Yes, Roberto, can you ride? Maybe, Maria. Get me a piece of canvas. <laughs> yes. Tear it off one of the packs. I help her. You stay here. Well, holding this. Bring me the machine gun. Huh? You'll make it all right if I hold them no. back. No. No, we will carry you. Don't argue. I couldn't stay on a horse. You can make it only if I stay here. Now, I want to talk to Maria alone. When I say, take her, take her, and make her go. Yes, English. Talk fast, English. They're coming to the gorge. I get the machine gun. Roberto. Listen, Maria. And don't say anything. The canvas, which I... No, Maria. We won't be going to America this time. Roberto. But I always go with you, wherever you go, understand? No, no. You leave with the others, Maria. As long as there is one of us, there's both of us, always. No, no, I stay with you. I stay one of us you. must do this thing alone for the other. You understand? Because, because I love you. It's easier if I stay. It's worse for me to go. It's as we said in the night. Our time is now. And it will never end. And you'll go because you are good to me. You're going well and fast and far. And we both go with you. I promise you that. Now, stand up. You're all there will ever be left of me now. I can't. I can't. There's, there's no goodbye, Maria. No. Because we're not apart. No. Pilar. And once you leave, Maria, you will not turn around. Be strong and take care of our life. Maria. No! Help Maria. Her. Let me see what help her. You will obey, Maria. No, no, I won't. Roberto, I won't leave him. <laughs> what can I do? The, the gun is loaded? Yeah, and a few extra clips, if you can manage. Look after the cropped head. Always. Go now. Adios, Inglés. Ali! Ali, that's it! Maria, Maria, safe. She'll be safe now. A little closer. That's it. Now. Jordan, now. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind. And therefore... Never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Our stars return for their curtain calls in just a moment. Ladies, what do you say when you get a run in your stocking? Something like this? Oh, nuts. Another run. My stockings don't last any time. Or maybe... Oh, gosh, a run. I'll never get this brand again. Yes, most women blame runs on the stockings. But they should blame themselves. If they were honest, they'd say... Oops, oh, a run. Well, that's what I get for rubbing these stockings with a cake of soap. Or... Well, it serves me right. Another run. Never should have used that strong soap on stockings. That's more like it. Strong soaps or rubbing with cake soap weaken elasticity so threads break easily instead of stretching under strain. Runs pop sooner. Gentle Lux Care saves stocking elasticity, cuts down runs. Strain tests show stockings washed with Lux Flakes last twice as long. Remember, no strong soap, no rubbing, just lukewarm Lux Suds. Dry rayons at least 24 hours. Gentle Lux Care will help you get twice the wear from every pair. Now, back to Mr. Kruger and our stars. Now, as they come to the footlights for their curtain calls, we extend our thanks to Ingrid Bergman, Gary Cooper, Akim Tamirov, Gail Sundergaard, and Mikhail Razumny. And I don't mind telling you that your names are quite a mouthful. Well, you've got four different nationalities represented, Mr. Cooper. That's right. Sweden, America, 
Denmark, and Russia. Yes, and very ably represented, too. You know, you ought to form an alumni association of For Whom the Bell Tolls. I mean, you lived together for so long to make that picture. Six months and two miles high in the Sierras. It was the ruggedest picture I ever made. You must have plenty of vivid memories of that experience. Well, the thing I recall most clearly was Razumni riding a mule each morning to location. <laughs> what was wrong with me riding a mule? I kept thinking it ought to be the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> By the way... Uh, well, was that your own beard you wore in the picture, Akim? Oh, it would have been, because uh, the high wind would blow it off. Oh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I imagine it was terribly cold up in those mountains. Yes, and hot, too. I remember Tamirov wearing a homemade Arab suit to keep his face from being burned. <laughs> yes. I was a Russian playing a Spanish part in an Arab costume in America. <laughs> <laughs> well, I certainly wish we had time for more of your experiences, but I want to be sure to tell our audience about next week's show because we're serving up a rather special treat called Sunday Dinner for a Soldier, that brand-new hit from 20th Century Fox. Congratulations, Otto. And who's in your cast? Well, our stars for next Monday night are Ann Baxter, John Hodiak, and Charles Winninger, <laughs> bringing you the heartwarming story of a soldier on leave and a lovable family who take him to their hearts only to find that this hospitality has changed the course of all their lives. Well, we'll certainly save Monday night for Sunday dinner for a soldier. Good night. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Good night, dear. Good night, and many thanks to all of you. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Ann Baxter... John Hodiak and Charles Winninger in Sunday Dinner for a Soldier. Housewives, you can help to save American lives and speed the day of victory and peace by saving those waste fats and greases needed for vital war materials. Save every drop from your kitchen. Take them to your butcher in a clean can and he'll give you two red ration tokens plus four cents for every pound. Otto Kruger will shortly be seen in the RKO picture, Murder, My Sweet. Ingrid Bergman appeared through the courtesy of David O. Selznick and will soon be seen in the Selznick International production, Spellbound. Hakim Tamirov is currently appearing in Universal's Technicolor picture, Can't Help Singing. Mikhail Razumny will next be seen in the Paramount picture, Practically Yours. Gail Sondergaard appeared through the courtesy of Universal Pictures, producers of The Suspect. Heard in tonight's play were Tito Ronaldo, Charles Seal, Eddie Marr, Norman Field... Howard McNear, Jay Novello, Ed Emerson, Paul Theodore, and Joe Granby. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Sunday Dinner for a Soldier with Ann Baxter, John Hodiak, and Charles Winninger. For luscious pies, delicious cakes. Spy shortening, my shortening. For everything she fries or bakes. My shortening, spy shortening. Let new Easy Mix Spry and Spry's amazing shortcut recipes help you serve more delicious meals with far less work. For lighter, better tasting cakes, tender, flaky pastry, crispy, digestible fried foods, get S P R Y Spry. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Sunday Dinner for a Soldier with Ann Baxter, John Hodiak, and Charles Winninger. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.